What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to talk about closures in JavaScript. So before we get into it, let's just first make one quick introduction that's seemingly going to be obvious, but it's still a very important um, introduction for the concept of closures in JavaScript. So I have a function called foo. And then out here on top of the function foo, I have a variable called x whose value is 10. Inside of this function now, I can simply console.log x, even though it's never been passed in. And to prove that, I'll actually run the code. So we're going to go ahead and call foo, and you'll see it'll actually log the value of 10. Okay, so this seems very obvious, but it's actually a crucial point because this is what actually opens up the possibility for closures. And basically what's happening here is we're actually noticing that a function can actually use variables that exist higher than itself. In other words, so long as they're within the same scope, and even though that variable hasn't actually been passed in as an argument to this particular function, but because it actually has access to that scope, it can actually use that variable. Okay, so this is the sort of gateway to allow closures to exist within JavaScript. So let's now actually look at an example of an actual closure. So if I have a function called outer, I'm going to go ahead and say function outer. Okay, now function outer will go ahead and do two things. It'll A, create a variable called x whose value is 10. It'll then create another function called inner. Console log, and then inside of inner, we're going to actually console log this x variable. So again, right over here, you can already see that this is sort of a very similar example that I just showed you a second ago, where a function can actually access a variable even though it wasn't passed into it, right over here, right? Because you can see x is declared outside of the function, outside of the inner function, it's declared in the outer function. It does not actually get passed into the inner function, yet the inner function will actually attempt to use it at some point in time. And finally, the last thing that the outer function is going to do when it gets called it is actually going to go ahead and return the inner function to the caller. So I'm going to go ahead and say return inner, right? So again, what we're having here outer do, there's basically three things that it's going to do. One is it's to get the declare a variable called x whose value is 10. It'll then create a function called inner, which is going to log the value of x at some point. And then it returns the inner function to the caller of the outer function, okay? So now if I go ahead and say const func is equal to outer, so now basically what happens here is like this. We just established that when we call the outer function, we get in return a new function. And that function is basically this inner function right over here. So technically now func is going to be this inner function here. Now, if I go ahead and say, uh, if I go ahead and call the func um, function, right? Let's see what happens. We can run this code. And as we can see, we still get the number 10. It actually still works. Now this may seem very interesting to you because what's happening is the x variable was declared only inside of the outer function. The x variable doesn't exist anywhere else outside, right? Yet when we're calling the func function later on at a different point in time, we would have assumed that the x variable doesn't exist anymore because in order to get the inner function to get returned to us so that we can have this local variable func, the outer function has to have already been executed because in order to get the inner function, we have to call outer first because outer returns inner to us. In order for us to get this inner function, outer has to get called, which would imply that x, which should only exist within the outer function, at this point that outer has already been called should no longer exist because it only existed within this function. Now we've called the function, it's been executed, it's done, therefore the x variable should theoretically no longer exist. And so this, the fact that it does exist and the fact that it actually still works and we still get the value of 10, that right there is a closure. Basically what's happening is, is as follows. Given the fact that, again, we've established that a function in JavaScript can access a value that's not been passed into it so long as it exists within the same scope, right? So functions can take advantage of their lexical scope, they can use variables, they can kind of look above themselves and use those values. And that's exactly what the inner function is doing right over here. And so what the outer function is doing is it says, oh, I see that the inner function will at some point at a later time, even long after I have been done executing, it will still need this x variable. Inner is still going to need the x variable. Therefore, I'm going to create what's known as a closure scope, and I'm going to keep this x variable around for a later point in time. So therefore, when the func the inner function has to run, it still has the value of x. And that's really all a closure is. So once again, very simply, outer function defines two things, the x variable and then the inner function. The inner function needs to have access to this x variable at a later point in time, even after outer is done executing, right? So all outer does is it keeps this variable of x around for a later point in time for when when the actual inner function needs to execute. That's really all a closure is. This is all sort of very contrived. It doesn't really seem very useful, but this at the very least is a definition of what a closure is and how it works. And once we've sort of established that, now we can actually talk about when this might be useful. So to show you that, I've got some code over here on this other tab over here. Now, the concept here is, we're basically trying to create a person object, but we're trying to have some sort of controlled access to how you may or may not access certain properties on the object. So typically when you're writing JavaScript and you might have like a person object or any other kind of object that you might have, 
you're going to have to, you really don't have any way to sort of modify the axis of different properties. So like the name can just get set, it can get red, right? You don't really have a lot of fine grained control of what you may or may not do with the particular properties. So like if you're writing C sharp or Java, you can actually make it like a read only or stuff like that. There's actually modifying, there's actually the ability to modify the axis of certain properties within a class. This object in JavaScript doesn't really have that ability. But using a closure, we can sort of fake that behavior, right? We can create what's known as a private scope. So this make person function accepts a name as an argument. And then what it does is it really does two things. It basically creates a local variable called person name. And then we set that value to the name that we're passing in right over here, right? Then we return an object. As you can see here, we're returning an object. The object on it has a key called get name, which when called returns person name. So here, if I come down to line 10, I create a, I created a P, which is basically just an, a person object by calling the make person and I pass in the Chaim. Then if I actually go and I run console.log p.getName, that's how I get Chaim. However, it is impossible for me to do p.person name because that doesn't exist. The actual p object, as you can see here, all it really returns is just a key called get name. So it doesn't actually exist, right? But this person name variable still exists at a later point in time, even though the make person function has already been run and is executed and is now no longer within existence, the person name variable still exists because we have an object that has a key called get name, which is a function that's going to need the person name variable to stay alive at a later point in time, which thereby makes this person name variable sort of private because the only way that you can actually access it is by calling the p.getName function. Otherwise, it will simply not be accessible. You can't call p.person name, you can't change the name, you can't really do anything. This allows us to have a kind of a private scope. And that's sort of one of the, one of the many, many use cases that you may have in, of what closures may be good for. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week in another video.